to those who say that we are rushing this issue of civil rights, I say to them, we are 172 years late. To those who say, to those who say that this civil rights program is an infringement on states' rights, I say this, the time has arrived in America for the Democratic Party to get out of the shadows of states' rights and to walk forthrightly into the bright sunshine of human rights. People, people, human beings, this is the issue of the 20th century. People of all kinds, all sorts of people. And these people are looking to America for leadership and they're looking to America for precept and example. That speech by future Vice President Hubert Humphrey at the 1948 Democratic National Convention galvanized a room full of lawmakers to vote for a civil rights platform, taking a huge risk as well as alienating Southern Democrats. Exactly 75 years later, that moment and its impact on the party is now chronicled in a new book titled into the bright sunshine, young Hubert Humphrey and the fight for civil rights. And that book's author, Columbia University professor Samuel Friedman, joins us now. Professor Friedman, thank you so much for being here. That is uh, certainly inspiring stuff. And uh, ahead of his time, uh, Mr. Humphrey there, someone who has, you know, maybe not a household name anymore. And we speak of the great uh, political figures of the last century, but someone, you argue, made a real impact. Tell us about it. Well, I think that that speech by Humphrey in 1948 is one of the overlooked landmarks of civil rights history. When he gets the Democratic Party to fully endorse civil rights for the first time, it not only sets up Harry Truman desegregating the military literally two weeks later, but it really prepares the political soil for everything Hubert Humphrey and LBJ with the mass movement of Martin Luther King pushing from the outside did in the mid-60s with the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act, the Fair Housing. Act. And yet, while Lyndon Johnson has gotten a really well deserved rehabilitation in the last few years that weighs his incredible domestic accomplishments alongside the catastrophe of the Vietnam War, I was really struck that Hubert Humphrey hadn't gotten that kind of reconsideration and was remembered bitterly or negatively if he was even remembered at all. Uh, Mr. Friedman, I, I think picking up on that, I, I remember uh, 1968. I was just uh, turning 13 years old and had joined the uh, Operation Breadbasket chapter here in New York of Dr. King's organization. Dr. King was killed that year, and I was later appointed youth director by Reverend William Jones and Jesse Jackson, who were the heads, and uh, uh, I looked up to them. And all of them talked about Hubert Humphrey in these great terms and uh, was stunned that he was defeated by Richard Nixon. And I think that this book is absolutely necessary. What I wanted to bring up for you to address is that for him to say that in 68, where the preceding convention four years earlier in 64 was Fannie Lou Hamer and others protesting the convention and the emergence of George Wallace in 68 really made him more her heroic than people really imagined because he stood up and challenged a party whose currents were not that settled at that time. First of all, Reverend, it's so great to meet you this way or re-meet you. We've met before. And I also was 13 years old in 68 as well. But Humphrey's speech is actually in 1948. Incredibly, this is 20 years before the 68 convention. And this is a time when there are hardly any black delegates even in the Democratic Party. In order to get the party to endorse civil rights, Humphrey had to win the votes of an almost entirely white set of delegates. And he had to do it when Harry Truman, who at times had been very forthright on civil rights, was trying to back away because he was afraid he would lose the election without the segregationist wing of the party. And Humphrey also gave that speech knowing that the segregationists, now they are Republicans, back then they were the white Democrats, knowing that they were ready to walk out of the convention. And doing all this, Reverend, when he was 37 years old, you know, the mayor of a middle-sized city, three years in elected office, it's mind-boggling the risk he took for this righteous cause. And 37 years old, with looking at a future ahead of him, 
and had become vice president, but risked it all to stand up for what was unpopular. He could have been heckled when he made that speech, and, and, and less known people walk out, and he did it anyway. You're right, and you can hear the booing in the background from the Southern delegates, but even some of Harry Truman's key people on the convention floor had warned Humphrey, if you give the speech, it's the end of you. And really, to the moment up on the platform when Humphrey was about to give the speech, he was wondering, is this mission going to be a suicide mission? The new book is titled Into the Bright Sunshine, Young Hubert Humphrey and the Fight for Civil Rights. Samuel Friedman, Friedman, thank you very much. A terrific conversation here this morning. And we'll be right back with more Morning Joe.